Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight in Hartford. A community staple has closed its doors, leaving customers and their employees shocked. Thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Brent Hart. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. To say Euro Asian Cafe is an LGBTQ plus run business and has been in Hartford for more than two decades. But last night, word started to spread that the cafe would close its doors for good. And by this afternoon, it was official. Fox 61's Jake Garcia spoke with several Hartford locals who say they are absolutely devastated. I just found out about it by trying to open the door and it was locked. So. That's, that's tough, um, and I'm sad to hear it because, you know, we love this spot. For customers like Lillard Lewis Jr., the sudden announcement of Tassane Euro Asian Cafe closing on Farmington Avenue is a shock, bringing back memories of the good times. The place has so many memories between karaoke, between getting late night tea or late night food, um, and just having a nice safe place to hang out. The news coming out of the blue for customers and artists who had events lined up, including a drag performance scheduled for Tuesday night. Uh, we have performers coming from Boston. We had uh, Robin Fierce here from RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, and it was supposed to be on Tuesday night. Late Sunday night, rumors started to spread that left performers like Miss Marita Bonita stunned. You know, when I heard that we weren't gonna have the show anymore, I was just very disappointed. One, that like the company didn't reach out to tell us ahead of time, because we were actually still planning music and costumes and makeup up until yesterday. When Monday afternoon, the news was official. Tassane's posted a statement to their website and social media channels saying they were closed for good. A former employee says she's not surprised by the closure. It was not surprising, super sad, but after the years of neglect that this place went through via upper management, it was not surprising at all. In a statement, the Locals 8 Hospitality Group, which owned Tassane's, said in part, quote, Locals 8 is making every effort to relocate Tassane's staff to positions at other Locals 8 restaurants in the greater Hartford area. Hurley says many of the current employees that she knows are passing on that offer. Since it was the same when the half door closed. They offered them, oh, you can go here or here, but no one wants to work for a company who is that neglectful and treats their employees like that. Despite tensions, this restaurant was a beloved staple in Hartford's West End for two decades. Um, and you know, it's just a great community, a great queer and LGBTQ plus space. That's kind of a safe space and one of the last few remaining kind of in Hartford area. In Hartford, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Jake, thank you. Locals 8 Hospitality Group says it will accept to send gift cards at its other locations and will refund tickets for any events that had to be canceled as a result. All right, time now for a first look at the weather. We have another nice day on tap for tomorrow and uh, plenty of chances of rain for the rest mm -hmm. of the week. Yeah, but it's a little chilly out there. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank. Such a nice day, but then those temperatures drop tonight, Rachel. Yeah, don't worry. You will not be using the word chilly at all during the day tomorrow. We're looking at highs in the 70s to near 80 degrees, but almost the rest of the week looks cooler then tomorrow we've got a warm front lifting through a boost in the cloud cover, but it looks like the rain stays away. Temperatures are in the 50s to near 60 degrees at the moment, and we're looking at overnight lows that will drop back into the lower 50s as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. Tomorrow we are starting off the day nice and bright. A few clouds out there, but overall a nice start with temperatures beginning in the 50s. It'll get even brighter as we head through the midday and afternoon, a bit breezy with winds out of the south at about 5 to 15 miles an hour. We're looking at temperatures in the low 70s at lunchtime and high temperatures that will be between 75 to near 80 degrees. So nice and warm for you out there. Along the Connecticut shoreline, because the wind is coming out of the south over that cooler Long Island Sound, temperatures will be closer to 70 as we head through the afternoon. But still, again, a really nice day. We'll see more clouds Wednesday and Thursday, along with a chance for a few showers, but no washouts in the forecast. We'll explain coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Still developing out of Waterbury tonight. Police are searching for a suspect in that city's latest homicide. It happened overnight at an event rental hall and left one family fractured. Fox 61's Matt Karen talked with that family this afternoon and has the story from Waterbury. Well, this all happened just after one o'clock this morning here at the So Blue Neek event space, which is in a shopping plaza near Wolcott Street and Sharon Road. It was here where shots were fired, wounding two women and killing a man. 
My body's just kind of numb right now. I'm lost for words. Just hours after losing her husband, Chantel Morris musters the courage to recall the terror. I see one of the ladies that was there. She ran off and fell. So I ran towards the door because I know my husband was in that direction too. When I ran there, I see my husband got blood all over his shirt. It happened here at the So Blue Neek private event rental hall. There were two parties inside, including an event celebrating Mother's Day. There was an argument over the music. 29-year-old Shaquille Devin Morris catered the event. He was the cook. Everybody knows he can cook really well. So he, I guess he, was, he made the food. He was standing around and the guy from the other side of the club just opened fire. The bullets struck Morris along with the 39 and 44 year old woman. There is too many guns in Waterbury, just ridiculous. The women survived. Morris, who initially got up and was responsive, took a turn for the worst. He was rushed to the hospital by friends that was here because the ambulance never showed up in time to bring him there. Police say people at both parties knew each other. Honestly, I just feel like Waterbury is just getting worse and worse. As the homicide investigation continues, so too does the life of a family now torn apart by gun violence. Why would they do that? <laughs> when am I going home and tell my baby? My daughter literally can't function without her father. <laughs> I'm hurting for my babies more than I'm hurting for myself. Family members describe Shaquille Morris as a great husband and father who was always there for people. This is Waterbury's fifth homicide of the year. So far, no arrests have been made. Reporting in Waterbury, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. The man accused of kidnapping a woman in Southbury last week made his first appearance in court this morning. Brian Lambert is accused of forcibly pushing a woman into his car and driving off on Friday. A witness called 911 after they reported seeing a man drag a woman through a wooded area and forcing her into a car. Now they were able to give dispatchers a description and license plate number. Officers tracked that car down to Southford Falls State Park and Lambert was being is being held on a $5 million bond. A judge lowered that bond, though, to 250000 this morning. Well, new tonight, Bristol police say their narcotics enforcement team took a fentanyl dealer off the streets. Police tell us they've been investigating Jorge Concepcion all month. They say community members told them Concepcion was dealing drugs. In a search warrant, police say they found evidence of a drug factory in his home. He's facing several drug-related charges and is being held on a $150,000 bond. Budget proposals in Middletown have residents divided. Some brought their frustrations about a potential 10% tax hike to City Hall tonight to protest. Democratic Mayor Ben Florsheim has proposed a more than $242 million budget, and with it, the town's tax rate would have to increase by 2.9 mills from last year. Now, for reference, a mill is $1 of tax for each $1,000 a property is assessed for. The mayor estimates property taxes would rise by $42 a month for the average family. Protesters argue the town should be focused on saving residents money, not charging them more. A 10 percent uh, rate you know, increase in the budget is way too much for people to be able to handle financially. I'm talking with people that they're threatening to move out of town uh, and possibly out of state because of the uh, costs uh, that are going on. Now, the town council met tonight to vote on two competing proposals from town Democrats and Republicans that would amend the proposed budget. After hours of debate and public comment, they voted eight to four to adopt the Democrats' proposal. It shaves about $5 million off the budget. Council members have until Wednesday to approve the package. Just moments ago, a Connecticut hero killed in the line of duty was memorialized. Take a listen as members of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial read his name in a candlelight vigil. From the state of Connecticut, Robert Carl Garten. There, Detective Bobby Garten was killed in September when his cruiser was hit by a driver blowing through a red light while speeding away from cops. Detective Garten's name is now added to a memorial wall in our nation's capital. This wall memorializes those who gave their life in the line of duty. 282 names were added to the police memorial this year, but there are over 24,000 officers there total. 
Well, tonight, state housing officials are celebrating another affordable housing complex being completed and filled with tenants. Take a look here. This complex in Orange is part of a state-funded initiative to bring 16 new affordable properties to our state. The housing project was announced in 2021. The plan is to use $49 million in state funding to open complexes across Connecticut. Many of them are in Hartford and New Haven, but some are in smaller cities like Orange and Salisbury. Officials say this complex is a step in the right direction. Like many of the states in our region and our country, is experiencing a historic housing shortage, one that transcends town lines and income brackets. Thankfully, we have the unwavering support of our governor, who's here today, who has prioritized the creation of housing for all. 15 other complexes that are also a part of the program are nearing completion. Many are already taking applications.